Max Hall and Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cotchin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell from the Hawthorne Footy Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hey, friends, got MJ from the Coaches Panel. I hope you're well. And oh, what a week of fantasy footy we have just endured over the past seven days. And this week looking real challenging for coaches as well. But I've assembled a couple of the members of the panel to help you. So no matter what you play, ultimate footy draft formats of seasonal or keeper leagues, whether you're a dream teamer, a super coach, an AFL fantasy or you're just like us here at the Coaches Panel, where you're a nut for all of them. We're here to help you with some of the big issues of the week. Joining me on this episode, a man that won Dream Team last year, and the punk, he's still in the lead. He's the number one ranked player in that format already. (laughs) Ritz is on the episode. Hello, mate. Mate, you must be thankful that I'm actually focusing on AF this year. I do like top 20 in that too. Far out. Oh, I'm going okay, yeah. Just luck, though. (laughs) <laughs> That's all luck, mate. Yeah, no, it's nice to have you on this episode. Uh, and also making his podcast debut, if you've been following the coaches panel through the 2021 preseason and into this season, then you've certainly seen his name, did a heap of the Amy Community Series reviews uh, for coachespanel.tv and also has been dropping a weekly article for you, helping you with some waiver wire pickups for Ultimate Footy. Talking about Jordox. Hello, mate. How you doing? Good mate, yes, long time listener and uh, first time on the uh, on the pod, so really excited to be here and um, yeah, there's lots to get through, isn't it? There is a lot to get through, you're not just a listener mate, you're a part of the panel mate, so don't you worry yourself about that pretty little thing, <laughs> alright lads, there, there, there's a lot to get to, we'll get to our Patreon questions a little bit later on, of course if you want to join the Patreon supporter group, all the links for that you can find where you get the articles at coachespanel.tv. I want to talk uh, dream team buy low targets, super coach buy low targets. I want to talk about some trading philosophies, but right out of the gate, uh, news landed uh, late Wednesday afternoon, uh, Wednesday evening, is that uh, the Geelong Football Club have confirmed that Patrick Dangerfield has undergone surgery on his right ankle. Scans revealed a syndesmosis injury. And they felt it was the best action, according to the club, to send him in for surgery. The club are saying his timeline of return is indefinite, which is generally code for it's more than a month. Therefore, horrible luck for the owners that held him through that three-week suspension where they get a decent round one score, an okay round four score, a round five score prior to the try the try, um, the uh, the injury, and it's time to move him on. And so <sighs> It's one of those ones that with hindsight, it looks good to have not picked him or good to have traded him at the end of round one, but that's okay. We're going to help you move forward no matter where you're at in the rankings. So Rids, if you're a danger field owner, is there a real obvious across the formats option or is it a very much format to format dependent? Uh, Super coach, there's an absolute obvious, obvious option. And pretty much everyone, has already traded this guy out. Ooh. That's all. <laughs> You've got to tell us who it is. Tune in next week to find out. <laughs> Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal. Yeah, nice. So he looked good, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he did. But I think it's more around that he's been on radio stations this week. He's He's been talking like a big guy. He trained all last week. So for the first, first time. time this year, he actually trained. He also let it slip on the radio the other day that in the last practice game before the season proper, he did a bit of an injury to his back. I think there was something about stress-related injury. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, it, everything's pointing to this guy just finding his form again. Now, there is a little, little, little caveat on this. Ooh. It's not the world's greatest matchup coming up against Carlton. Um, Ed Kerno has been tagging. Yeah. And there's no problems in the world. Ed Kerno is going to Lockie Neal. Every day. Probably an hour before the game starts. Maybe two. Yeah. To him, until they actually jump on the plane on the way home. So, and even then he might follow suit still. But with do, Supercoach, do we think- so, do we think do we think Jared Lyons form 
is going to get Taggers thinking. Maybe not no. necessarily this week, but I, I'd be I'd be encouraged if I was getting a lock in you that Jared Lyons is is just he's just flying around doing absolutely whatever he wants week in week out. Just a thought. Yeah, no, nah, there's no impact at all. So, <laughs> zero. Locking yeah. Neil, though, you've got to remember it's super coach. He may not have the best matchup this week, but you're bringing him in for from this point for the rest of the year. Correct. And he's a captaincy option if he does regain his form. Yeah. So, yeah, no, nah, I just don't think Jared Lyon hurts enough with um, what he does with the ball. That's all. Yeah, no, fair enough. Look, at 580,000 in Supercoach, he's already dropped over 140,000. Uh, had that obvious massive score last week of the 157. The next three, Carlton is probably the more um, tagger potential one to worry about. Then it's Port Adelaide, Fremantle, Gold Coast, Richmond, GWS. Maybe by then the ball will be close to getting back, but I think he might just be a little bit short. Uh, and then Melbourne are the next teams before his buy in round 13. And even if the ball is back, though, MJ is probably he's been playing that when he was fully fit at the start of the season. He wasn't tagging; he was going as a small pressure forward type role. Correct. So it is even questionable whether he gets that role anyway. So I just think it's absolutely friendly after this week. Do yourself a favor, jump on now. Don't don't work out who the next injury is next week yeah, to try yeah, and. Yeah. Just you got it. There will be more. <laughs> there will be more. Yeah, exactly right. And but you've got an absolute super coach genius in Dangerfield. Mm. Just go and get the next best genius, and it's going to bank you with thirty thousand as well in the trade. So why not just do it? Yeah, no, fair enough too. The other thing on the other thing on Neil uh, uh, super coach, just to go on what you're saying, Rids, is um, so last year in, in in you know dream team and fantasy we had the the shorter quarters. Um, so his scoring was fantastic when you extrapolate it out, the, the 1.25, whatever you call it. Now, Supercoach, uh, the quarters are longer this year, but the points are going to be the same because it's yeah. the same amount of points in Supercoach, um, regardless of how long the quarters go for. So I just think um, that was a thing that put me off him a bit in the Dream Team and, and Fantasy comps, but in Supercoach, um, Absolutely spot on as uh, probably your prime candidate there. Yeah, like like Rid said, if you traded him out or went against him at the start of the year, now's that great time to be able to pick him up in super coach yeah. um, right across the rest of the year. And AFL Fantasy, Danger's ownership took a pretty substantial hit after round one, understandably in that format when a player's mm. out for three weeks, you choose to move him on. So his ownership percentage is considerably lower than it was at the start of the year, but still 16% of coaches in AFL fantasy at time of recording. Only maybe they jumped on because they liked the North Melbourne matchup and I could have understood that. George Ox, if you're an AFL fantasy player and you've got, you're one of those 16%, there's been a big bunch of new DPPs hit the forward line as well. Is it as simple as premium forward in, premium forward out, or are you looking for some other options elsewhere? In fantasy, I think um, it, it's it's really interesting the timing because you know first thing I did for for real dream team is when I heard the news was looked at the forwards and and, and you know we'll touch on that shortly and geez the cupboard's a bit bare I reckon um, and then you you jump across to fantasy with the DPPs we had added this year and wow it's like throw a dart um, so Josh Kelly Jack Billings Lockie Hunter and, and then Matt Fife all now available and, and curiously all within you know, 10, 20 K of each other. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, I think you do go for um, one of the top dogs in fantasy. Yep. I think there's options you know, in forward line. We're talking, I think there's options in super coach for some um, cheaper guys that have real good upside in that format, you, you know, say an MP and a, and then they're kind, but in dream team, I, yeah, I'm a bit frightened of what you could do there if you don't have Dunkley, but back cool. to fantasy, we do have options Josh Kelly's probably the one that sticks out as the one with the most um, upside, particularly with the thought of Whitfield coming back. And, and I know there's a chance that he'll get a run, you know, in a, in a, um, in VFL in a reserves week? game this week. VFL, yeah, I went to say VFL, didn't sound, didn't sound right. <laughs> um, so that's a great story for him. And I just think there's still doubts over whether he gets back. And 
I, th- I don't think they mind what Josh Kelly's doing forward of the ball. I mean, kick the winner on the weekend, obviously. I think out of that group, um, Kelly, Billings, Hunter and five, I think Hunter's the one. I, I just feel like, um, you know, we're all a bit worried about how all those Bulldogs were going to fit, you know, Trelaw and, and how all the points were going to be split. And, and Hunter's taken a bit of a backward step. I just see him the one, as the one that has the upside. Um, so, yeah. But... Like I see, you could throw a dart. I mean, no, five, um, great option for your forward line. 688 in NFL fantasy. Yeah, I like five. Um, and, and Billings as, you know, as a, yeah, he had a stinker on the weekend, but I think most most of the 22 that suited up for the Saints did. So, um, yeah, I just think AF, it, it, it's, it's so interesting that DPP's, you know, it's the biggest, I think, that I can recall. Um, in terms of big mid guns being available forward, and then bang, Dangerfield's out indefinitely. So yeah, there's enough. options. Yeah, look, Billings. If you want to know what he's done prior to that really stinky week, where as a play, guy playing forward against Richmond, where they just decided, all right, we'll turn up for a game. We'll show that we we lose two games, and the media are going to knock us. We'll put it on the throat for a few three quarters of a game. It was ominous. Did. It was ominous. Uh, they went 100, 122, 80, 97 Billings prior to this week. So. Um, certainly he's in and around the market. Rids in dream team though, is it again, that that cupboard is bare in that forward line. It feels like outside of Dunkley, nobody else is screaming, trade me in. If we were looking in that forward line, who's the next in line on the premise someone's not chasing um, that's already owns Dunkley? Is there another forward or should we be looking to use some DPP to make some movements around there? Nah, you shouldn't be going a forward. You've got to go a midfielder. Yeah, I agree. So you you should have a DPP. Because the rookies this year, when you started, they are pretty much mid-forward rookies. Yeah. So you should have had at least one, whether it's a Brockman, a Scott, whoever it Campbell, is. Campbell, whatever, yeah. Just you've got to absolutely look at a midfielder in this instance, okay? So I would actually be suggesting to people, Tom Mitchell's actually... He's um, a little bit cheaper. He's sitting there. He's got a reasonably decent matchup against Adelaide Rose. this week. Yeah. I just think he, I know it's in Tasmania. So, but the thing is, like, what you're looking for here, okay, is getting an absolute premium in the midfield, someone who's absolutely going to score you 100 a week. Yeah. All that. And you can even bake a few points. I just don't think you can get that guarantee in the forward line at this point in time. Now, the only exception to the rule is side bottom, but I mm. still don't know whether he's shown quite enough to be comf- comfortable at this point. You no, always want to see it. Yeah, got going. It's kind of like, at least with Neil, and again, it's wrong to always contrast people and players and injuries and form and positional stuff. But at least with if you were trading Neil in, in Supercoach, it's like, okay, well, at least I've seen him start to deliver over the past three weeks in bits and pieces and then dominate a full game with side bottom. We still really haven't seen him, him do too much more than just get close to it. Certainly he's better in, in dream team and fantasy formats than in super coach where he's butchered the ball a little bit through there. It's why he's currently delivered some okay scores an 80 or 79 or 108 to 73. A big matchup this week against the Bombers um, on Anzac Day the following week. It's Then it's probably the time I'd consider if you're purely just looking at the fixture run. You're not looking at form. You're not looking at role. The next two weeks after that, it's Gold Coast and North for, for Collingwood. And um, one's at the G against Gold Coast. The next one um, at Marvel. North. Uh, for North, yeah. yeah. So that's probably something I'd be a little more tempted by if I was looking to play the fixture run. But- but now this is the big but. If you want to jump we early, like this, this is the week to jump early. Yeah, I agree. So Against Essendon, yeah. Essendon. Now we saw what happened with Brisbane last week with the Brisbane midfielders against Essendon. Everyone. You've got Gold Coast, which is very favourable. Both games at the MCG, mm. and then you got North Melbourne the week after, where you would expect Collingwood would actually win quite comfortably. And a guy mm-hmm. like Sidebottom can go on runs at any point in time. So it's all about timing it to the draw. Now, mm-hmm. I just haven't seen enough to go, I'm absolutely confident, confident he's going to go 100 for between now and the end of the year. I think he'll go 90, 
Yeah. And that might be enough for you to make that jump. It's just at the same price, Tom Mitchell is, you know, with, he's got history of being a DT relevant player. Mm. So, and potentially. I think Sidey doesn't also, mind. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, you're all right. Um, and oh. he's also a like captain option. So, yeah. If he gets on one of those tears that Tom Mitchell can, 130, 140 runs, he's absolutely someone you want to have totally. on your team at that point. And I, I think that's a good point, actually, um, you know, of, of side bottom versus one of these primo mids. I mean, I'm, I was just going to say before, um, I'm pretty sure Sidey likes Anzac Day. I, I, I have memories of him going pretty big on the day. But um, I think if you can turn danger into a, a, another captain, I think that's... Um, that's a really good way of looking at it. And obviously Titch is um, absolutely a captain option, especially this week uh, down Tassie against the Crows. I just want to flag one other name. Um, wow. Love to know your thoughts too, Rids. Um, this guy is someone that, you know, we all sort of um, denied about preseason and he started on fire and then he got the, the challenge that all young mids get, the tag. Um, and then he went big again on the weekend. And across all three formats, I think he's viable. And it's Andy Brayshaw at the Dockers. Um, so Super Coach is particularly he's under 500k, which is fantastic price. Um, Real Dream Team is where I'm looking at him. He's at 630, which is crazy. So he started a um, couple of big tons across the formats, got the two tags from Kerno and then Warple, which yeah, that's another story in itself. Warple mm-hmm. tagging, um, and then yeah, I watched him firsthand against the you know, Crowies on the weekend. He um, he's an absolute jet, and I just think he's. He's underpriced. Um, it probably does go against the philosophy of, you know, maybe in fantasy right now is not the time to get a guy unless you're sure you want him for the rest of the year. But if you want to save a bit of coin, I just think out of all the mids that have dropped since the start of the year, um, he's gone real cheap. And I think he's going to be great from here. Rids, what's your thoughts on uh, the better Brayshaw? Uh <laughs> Um, okay, so I don't I don't know. He's been getting the tags. That's the main issue. Where we know North Melbourne have been using Kane Turner the last couple, couple of times. weeks in tags. Yeah. I'm just worried he's got a break even that he may not hit anyway in a good game across the format. It's 107 in Dream Team, 117 mm. in Super Coach. Yeah. Um I think it's almost like you could wait one week to get a better indication. And then the matchup the week after is probably a little bit more favorable with West Coast. Yeah, fair enough. Having said that, though, like, I mean, he is a viable option for the year. It's just he's the difference between his best and his, his poor performances is still mm. too big for mine. It's pretty big, yeah. It is. I would love those it is. 50s. I'd love to see those fifties be eighties yeah. in the tag. Yeah, I agree. And it will in it will in time. I think he's fourth year, and you know, it, look, I could be a bit early on him. I just I just saw his price um, after watching him first down on the weekend, and thought, oh, that's a that's a tasty one. I mean, you got to look at what you can do with it. I mean, danger. Yeah, you could go to the next best. I mean, the thing we didn't mention, you know, in those uh, in Super Coach and Dream Team is where we're lucky is that danger did miss those three weeks. So his price hasn't changed. So he's yeah. just top top dog. And I think only Dunkley really is the only one you'd have to spend up for. But, you know, if you could go down to a brace or save, you know, 100K in some formats, um, I guess it depends what you want to do with the other trade. But for So, support. yes. So I'm just going to be devil's advocate and play the other path for now. Um, I think Danger, you would absolutely have started him as a set and forget, yeah, I never move him out of your team option. And then you held him for those three weeks when he was suspended yeah. because of, of that, that reason. reason. You are set and forget. So if you are trading mm. someone that you had that mindset about, you really should be moving it to another person that you can absolutely trust to be set and forget yeah. for the remainder of I guess, the year. I guess, I guess that's a good point. And, and if you were to get a brochure, you'd want your second trade to make that worth it and to be upgrading. You need to make the money A work. captain option. Agreed. Yeah, if, yeah. if the money's yeah, not working for we're, it, prob- we're probably going to move into this a, a bit later, the, the Flynn situation. But 
I think danger actually offers a lot of people who have the R2 headache um, a pretty easy get out. If you've got the DPP of a you know, Tracy or a Fullerton as your R3 and you're sick of the headaches of Flynn, um, this could be your quick way to just go Grundy or, or you know, Riley O'Brien if you're all gone. Um, I think I just think that's another option that danger feels. It's, it's like turning a, a crisis into uh, an opportunity. opportunity. Just pick something and just just forget it. Put him in, set and forget. We we'll probably should have done that from the start. Of course, uh, we did get the news today that Flynn's back, so that makes it a little bit. Flynn's more playing true. this week. I suppose the opportunity coaches have that are running a Flynn at R two and and Rids. I'm I'm keen to ask you a question about. Um, Aggressive trading mindset in, in a second, just to buy a little bit of time. The benefit coaches do have, whether it be a Meek, a Tracy, a Fullerton, whoever it is, if they if they have been running Flynn, as Jordox mentioned at R2, is with that Friday night matchup against the Bulldogs, you do get that opportunity to at least have a look at the score to before it pulls the trigger on the danger field. So unless it was a McRae or a Dunkley that you were holding on to desperately to trade into this week, rightly or wrongly, you've got the opportunity, hold fire a little bit, get some information. And maybe if you, you go, look, if Flynn gets under an 80, I'm making that trade to one of those premium rucks. But if he goes and jags you a 90, Albeit, a, I think it's going to be a Stefan Martin and Tim English combo again. I, I think Sweet was a one and done, at least for now. He's just going to play whenever they rest Stefan Martin and give him some games and that's it. I think that's an interesting one. R- Rids, before we do talk about aggressive trading mindset, it that's another option for us too, isn't it? To, to fix the headache that's been there for a fortnight with R2 that we know won't be there this week, but it's going to rear its ugly head again in the next couple of weeks, no doubt. Yeah, but I don't think you should be setting your expectations at 80. Hmm. Like, don't forget, this guy you bought as a rookie. So yeah, good call. we're seeing rookies across the field right now having a lot of variance in their low levels. Like, we saw 30s and 20s and so on and so forth yeah. over the course of the last couple of weeks. So I wouldn't be doing that at all. I'd actually be going, you know what? I'm going to accept any rookie score because we're going to hold him for one extra week because he's a money-making rookie. Yeah, he is. Got great we break even. Jackson. So the thought process has to be, I cannot compare Flynn to that premium ruck because what happens then is you're just going to get another rookie score for whoever you're playing instead of upgrading him. So, so you've got to think through how you actually – you manage your expectations on what the Flynn score will be. If he's the first run, I mean, you, but you can still loophole it. Yeah, of course you can. Him. You can put the guy on the field, whoever's not playing, whether it's Meek, whether it's whoever, Bulletin and you can just go, okay, fair enough. We're just going to accept it. Now, if you've got a hunter, though, and, mm. or you've got someone later in the week, like I Crazy. think the 3-8 games on the Saturday night, so yeah. you should know... Roughly that. No teams by then, yeah. Yes, but again, don't lose sight of why you started Flynn. That's good advice. Okay? Because I can tell you now, okay, and again, this isn't about me, but I'm trying to just throw up as this case here. I'm actually ranking okay across the formats, and I started Flynn. Yeah, so exactly. I'm still not 100% sold that the right way to go was the seven for getting the rucks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm only basing that off my own ranking at the moment. So it's like it's all about how you spend the money elsewhere. Correct. It's not about a direct relationship of Flynn or a rookie versus the premium ruck. So again, it, I think that's. A- I think the set and forget was the option for those who wanted to manage their stress levels and get <laughs> and get good night's sleep. <laughs> I don't know. But I you're right on the ranking. I still don't know about that because the re- the thing is, like, would you have been better off having a James Rowe on the field or would you have been better off having a combination oh, of Jack yeah, Siegel and Taylor Walker? My, so, my thoughts on the, on, the, on the kid, and it's a great point, but you got to look at it this way. If you've got a kid on your field, right, in any line and you're relying on him and then he's out, it's, it's annoying. It's a headache. Sure. Um, but more often than not, you'll have cover and, um, you know, you move on. 
when it's in your ruck, that's 50% of that ruck line. That's 50% of that line that is out. And if you're one cover, um, because you only get one, you, you get the utility, obviously, and AF is not playing, it's, it's a bigger headache than if, you know, just a James Jordan was rested this week or, or something like that. That that's where it's different for me, and and where I've had to sleep last night. But it's still fifty percent. Again, I'm not gonna like. It's fifty percent of the on field in that position. Yeah. So and you've also got a utility in AF that you could actually have another rookie ruck associated to and swap them in and out when you need to. Now, well, isn't it funny in in AF how we they got rid of the the second ruck backup um, and added the utility. And uh, and here we are now with the plethora of um, <laughs> rough backups that, that have been around. So. Yeah, it's a nice problem. So I suppose the thing I'm trying to highlight here, NJ, is, yes. is you can be aggressive, and that's great. Be aggressive, but make sure you're not forcing things at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got Flynn now available this week, guess what? You cop your meek from 20 from two weeks ago, and you might have copped the 30 last week from, from Tracy, Tracy or whatever. Don't 21. Say, yeah. yeah, whatever it is, yeah. So, but you've already copped them. That's yeah. already associated to your season-long score. Totally. So don't go... Adding a Grundy type. Now, yeah, yeah. When Flynn's finally been, you know, guaranteed a game this weekend. I agree. Like, and you've got an option of loopholing him anyway. It's like, and you may or may not yeah. have that, but you still need to back in why you sat on him for the last two weeks as yeah. you are too. Fair enough, too. Otherwise, it feels forced, doesn't it? If you're going to go jump in from, say, a danger field to, let's say, Grundy. Yeah, now, it's good that. the stress level's 100%. But we have no stress levels this week. He's already guaranteed the run. And he's playing Friday and night. Yeah. yeah. game of the week. So, that's this week. So, that's this week. What and that's the beauty. Week? Yeah, and that's but the beauty of that, next week. To, we can adjust next that. Next week, we can adjust it. But yeah. you can't go... You've kept him to make that cash this week to get that rookie score to cash in. You should be planning on how you exit from Flynn next week. And the so warning signs were there. The, the biggest, that up. The yeah, biggest yeah, yeah. banana peel with Flynn has been because you're right, we, we all went with him for a reason. He was going to be the number one ruck. Um, you know, early signs were fantastic. I loved his game against Gorn a few weeks ago. When he before he was rested, I just thought this. I love watching him. Um, I think the banana peel has been how good <laughs> Big Mummy's been. I, I don't think any of us expected that when um, Bruce went down and we saw this opportunity to really save Corn and play a kid as R two. I just Mummy's been the banana peel for me. But everything you're saying is right. It, you got him for a reason. I just think. I don't know. Sometimes in this game, there's an opportunity to right or wrong and get someone like Grundy or Gorn in. And just, I just think if that opportunity comes, it, it could be a long time before it comes again because of injuries and yeah. prices but, and what. But, but, but it's fascinating. Sure, it, it's a, make sure if that's the goal, you plan to do that. I'm not saying don't do that. Yeah, of course. What I'm saying mm. is plan an exit strategy, cash in on those negative break-evens that Flynn has this week, maximise the rookie score because, again, he's averaging quite decent across the format. Yeah, team. yeah. In our mm. super coach, he's averaging 100. Yeah, that's like, right. I wow. mean, how can you have everyone saying, oh, no, 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 he's said it, forget. Don't forget, he's actually averaging quite, quite well. Yeah. So 83 in Dream Team's AFL Fantasy. 83. And so if you're going to, say, yeah, go in. So if you go five rounds a case, so he's had three scores of 80, 240 points, you might have copped the 220s, okay? So let's Deal just say that. that's another 40. That's still 280 points. You're still looking at just under 60 a week average across the board for that one spot. It's not a terrible outcome. I, I can Especially vouch for that. Yeah, I can vouch for that. Last week in Supercoach, I, I made trades. I brought in another premium midfielder last week that delivered quite a nice score. In that format, I pumped out a 2392 and I copped a rookie donut. And then the week prior, I copped a meek 
20 odd or 30 odd in that format. And, and I'm, but again, it's, if you're going to cop a donut in any line, you want it to be ro- a rookie flavored donut. You got Flynn yes, this week, yes. bank him for whatever he gets and delivers for you. If there's, whether it be a kneel, whether it be a side bottom move that you want to get from a danger field that you alluded to, whether it be that Tom Mitchell, we know this Ruck 2 problem will merge up again. So bank the week you can have. Bank the score, bank the cash generation, move forward. But then know that as potential as early as seven days time, this issue is <laughs> arising again. Therefore, yeah, just, have a plan. Have a plan. Yeah, exactly. And it might be the case where you go, okay, let's say AFL Fantasy. I want to bring in McRae and Farrah. Sure. Okay, as a two double downgrade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strengthen my overall team by bringing in these two, get the cash generation an extra week, which allows means I might have 200, 300, 400,000 in the bank, whoever you are actually using to, to bring those guys in. Because yeah. you've got fat cows across the lines. So an extra now. week just means they get fatter again. And you can actually cut that guy to someone who's not playing and upgrade to win anyway. That's right. But that's the whole thing of this is plan ahead. Now, you might have Flynn McKay at a position at the moment. Let's just say if you do have him at R3, sure. you might want to think about having a DPP ruck as your forwards eight. Yeah. So then when you move Flynn out in a couple of weeks to any rookie across the board, you can just swing that guy into the four R3 position and bring in the best available mid or forward rookie at that point in time it's just all about having a plan or an exit strategy to what you want in this outcome yeah i think so and again remember in a couple of weeks time if we're planning ahead rowan marshall as a ruck forward will start to bottom out in price for us i know a lot of people are really bullish on marshall as a forward premium at some points in the year. So you can build in that extra insurance policy as the year goes on too. So don't forget to think about the future in a month's time, Caleb Daniel, this 20, this 19 score is going to have rolled out of his price cycle. Jordan Ridley owners, maybe you went Daniel to Ridley like a couple of thousand coaches did. Look, that's not a great trade, but that's just bad luck. I'll, I'll say it there. Yeah. Um, and that's a great, great trade, trade because, well, not, it's a one week yeah. and it wasn't yeah. an injury. It was, a, it was a dumb trade as far as I'm concerned, but you got bad luck to go with it as well. So that's fine. Yeah, Ridley's yeah. going to be a trade-in target that's low soon. Shannon Hearn, albeit on the older side, again, he's been pumping out tons across the formats. So we've got these three cheap defensive premiums that are all capable of being top six to top 10 scoring candidates real cheap in a month's time for us have you got a plan for that have you got a plan for side bottom after his break even i think it's about 100 to 130 across the formats he's bargained for you next week zorko is a bit up and downish but he's there and thereabouts you got neil this week um dusty if you're not one of the 70 percent of super coaches that are on him he's having a quiet a couple of weeks in contrast to the start so there's there is a guys tom mitchell that rids has talked about as well that we can look at there's a there's a heap of them in every format. The key thing, do you have a plan? Do you know where you're going to go? Knowing full well, plans have to change and plans have to evolve and great coaches make those plans. I was, I was just going to say, um, yeah, the plan, the best laid plans uh, sometimes do go awry. And <laughs> I think Rowan Marshall is a great example because Heading into the season, he was someone I was eyeballing and thinking, oh, if this, if this Flynn experiment doesn't work and I've got to get it, you know, yeah. what, like Rid said, what's my exit plan? How do I hit the abort button and get out without ending up with, you know, fielding Josh Tracy like I just did? Huh. Um, and then Marshall comes in, you know, we'll give him a week or two, see how he looks, and he's straight back out. And, and geez, that's just been the, the flavour of this year, those injuries to those to those guys that were, you know, it's just been a bit of a revolving door. I mean, I know Caleb Daniel, like you said, was, was a one week suspension. So probably a poor example, but yeah. there'd be people who, there'd be people who traded out danger, you know, and then thought I'll bring you back in because of how bare the cupboard is in the forward line yeah. up against North thought, here we go. You know, should be a big one. And yep. out he goes again. So I think you have your plan, but geez, you gotta be ready to uh, pivot. 
away from the plan very quickly. And, and Rids, that's what great coaches do, isn't it? They, they have a plan mm. and then they know that sometimes that plan isn't going to work and it means they might cop a rookie flavored donut here or there, which are the flavors you want to get. And great coaches make things work out for them, knowing luck sometimes is a factor in it. Yeah, but you shouldn't only have one plan and then that's no, it. No, you should not. have multiple plans that cover scenarios. And then you can just implement which scenario fits best at that point in time. And all you got to, you can't, we, we're playing a crazy game where we're <laughs> trying to predict the future. Yeah. There's no way yeah. no anyone is 100% correct all the time. No. And luck is always going to play a part of this. Now, we've been saying this for years, MJ. Yes. So it's always the good coaches, okay, will get to a certain point. And then the luck will come in and that will determine whether you're actually going to contend or not or whatever the outcome is from that week. And when you get to our game later on down the track, when you've got completed side, and even if you're elite focused, you've got mm. two completed sides, at any point in time, anyone can just have an absolute pearler of a game yeah. or someone can have an absolute shocker <laughs> of a game, a Caleb Daniel type game from two yeah. weeks ago. And that just, there is a luck factor to this. I agree. It's just who you own. You can't predict that. You just got to cop it on the chin and move on the next time. But the good coaches always have plans yeah. and then they try and stay ahead of the pack. They don't want to be reactive. They want to be proactive. Correct. Now, a lot of that comes down to the eye test. And we were talking about that in the chat the other week. Mm. The eye test is almost the biggest tool across the formats. You've got to watch football games, to, not football scores, football games, to get an indication whether you need to be jumping at shadows or you're yeah. actually jumping at real issues. Now, Tex Walker is the one that jumps yeah, out. Yeah, let's talk about watch. Tex. Yeah, let's do that. The big Texan. He was very, 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 very sore at the end, like yep. late in that game. Okay. He now if you're looking at points and you haven't watched that game, you think, oh, well, 75, that's that's probably a poor game for Tex in his current vein. Achievable of break even still. That's not yeah. too bad from you copped 130 a couple of weeks ago mm. and a 70, that's still 100 average over a couple of games. Happy days. You're still happy. But we know for a fact he was he took a massive hanger in the first Ooh, half. Yep. He he was kicking goals, he was moving freely, leading. Suddenly it was like he's just aged 50 years in a quarter <laughs> of <laughs> like he, he looked like fair he had enough a walking stick. Yeah, well, he had he looked like he was having a walking stick. He started giving away free kicks. He was outmarked by Griffin Lowe, who his first game for about 35 years. Like, it was crazy what appeared in that first half to second half comparison. Yeah, like, that to me went, wow, we the alarm bells going off, things were happening. We talked about this only last week, and mm. how do you do it? You arrived at until a point in time. Guess what? That point in time happened a week later. I think so. So I think he's absolutely sitting there going, Trade me, trade me, trade me now. And again, and worst case scenario is he goes and scores another 100 or so off against the Hawks this week. But if you're moving him on to one of those top line premiums that you don't have, whether it be you're going to get Dunkley and you've just hated watching him the past five weeks as a non-owner. It's the Steel, it's the Oliver, these consistent ton guys. It's the Mitchell who's arguably at that value selection. Maybe it's, that's it. I'm, I'm getting... Jake Lloyd, I think now's the time to get him. He hasn't been dominating, but he's not been horrible. I'm going to go get him. That's the time. I'd, I'd take those premiums, albeit a very good month of tax has gone before. I'm sleeping much easier now, and I've got well, those guys. That's exactly time. it. And, Jane, you just said it yourself. You have cop Texas scores for the last three weeks, which were absolutely unexpected, okay? Bangers. He's made you not... Money, he's made you hundreds of thousands of dollars. In and you banked the points as well. Yeah. And you grabbed him initially as a quick money earner. Yep, so time to move. 
Time to move. He's break even to 80s and 90s and 100s or whatever across the format. Even if he scores 100 this week, he's only going up by a small margin. 10, 20, 30, you can deal with that. 600,000 plus now across the format. Yeah. I think it's super coach is slightly less than that. But the fact is you've done what you needed to do. He was a quick money earner. You spent two, three, four weeks on that quick train down the road. He's got definite signs of soreness appearing in whether it's a calf or an ankle or whatever it is. It's yeah. there though. We were all saw it. So it's just like, okay, no need to hold him anymore. You've already taken, take the money and run. Yeah. Turn him into the only thing I'd say you can absolutely guarantee to get that hundred average for the remainder of the year for a hundred thousand spend. It's great. It's great insight on you know on someone because I don't have tech, so I didn't have the kahunas to do that. I think <laughs> every week I've been in, in absolute. Uh, I don't even have the words for it. But anyway, um, I think if you are a tech owner, you are living a little bit in fear of when he does fall off that cliff and, and when and reality hits a bit more. And you know, I think what you're saying is right, Rids. And if you can if you can pick that moment a week ahead of the pack, um, yeah. you're absolutely laughing. The the only thing I'd offer though, I mean. He came off the track, I know, during the week leading up to the game and still played fantastic footy in that first half. That specky was, yeah, great. And then and then something's happened in the second half. Um, the only thing I'd say is I, I just can't see the Crows playing him down in freezing cold Tassie if he's not right. So my take would be if he's named and, and you know, obviously he makes it to match day and suits up, um, I, I don't know, particularly in, in, in Dream Team and Supercoach, if it's just trading for a forward, um, you know, obviously if you don't have a, a, you know, a Dunkley or, you know, one of those top tops, um, top dogs, absolutely. But with what we were saying at the start of the program about, you know, there's not many key um, gun forwards available. Here's a guy that's averaging whatever he's averaging, and I'm sure he won't average that for the rest of the year. But even in a loss, he's going to be kicking goals and scoring well uh, or decent enough. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But but if you Sorry. can pick the right Jordos. time to jump off pegs, then you will be laughing. Jordos, I never mentioned the forward. <laughs> you talked about no, other well, yeah, lines. I, yeah. No, I know, but not everyone's going to have that flexibility. And, and, and no, yeah, of course. More, sure. time, everyone more times sure than not, you know. They should, the they should, they but should, they may already the be they may already be doing that with Dangerfield and using that DPP connection. So I'm just saying, if I don't know, he's he's playing well, he's scoring well. We have a forward line that doesn't score well at the moment. I mean, you trade him to a mid and you flick one of the DPPs forward. I mean, if it's one of the kids, does he go on your field? Yeah, I don't know. All those I just things think have he's to. He's a guy yeah. that's killing it. You've yeah, got to factor yeah, all those things in the mix, but I, okay, I think so the key is in, go. But I, MJ, but I would okay. say I would I would back I would back Rids in to get this call right. Yeah, I would on. too. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. So I would be highlighting the fact that you do have a DPP rookie that's on the bubble in a week's time that can play a part of that in Finlay McRae as McRae. well. Yeah. I also will just highlight <laughs> that for 120000 you can get Tex Walker to Tom Mitchell. In all formats, it's it's like a hundred k in yeah. Super Coach. Yeah. Yeah. The well, deal. look, I was. <laughs> you don't say no to that, but 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 I was talking more, yeah, as a forward because who's sit, who's taking that? So where's Tech sit now for you? What F three maybe F two F three? Um, you, you're trying for Tom Mitchell. You know, that's incredible. Um, who would have yeah. thought that? <laughs> no, year. Nobody would have thought who that. Who sits? It's the other Who piece of the puzzle the that you've got to factor. Time. Absolutely. It's another yeah, piece yeah. of the puzzle is if, okay, you're moving Tex into the midfield, are you moving Jordan onto the bench and now you're having a field and Anthony Scott? Factoring all those culmination of things together. But again, why did you get Taylor Walker? I, I don't Correct. think there's anybody that went, I'm getting Tex as a premium for the year. He might turn out to be like a Jack Zebel is currently showing. He's giving you no signs, no injuries. No ceiling problems, mm. no down games. At least Texas had some quieter moments in games for variable reasons. So for me, it's going, why'd you get Tex? He's a fast money maker, bank a couple of points, and every points you get that's over an 85 marker, you're just raising the roof that <laughs> life has gone well for you. 
this is the danger that I think coaches get into. Of They go, oh, he could be a premium. He could be a premium. You know what? And if he is, great. Awesome. But I would rather be wrong on this side and trade him and get a Mitchell, get a Neil in super coach, get the Correct. Lloyds. Get, I'd rather be wrong and get these guys that I'm confident in for the year and cop one or two bad rookie scores along the way in my forward line or in my midfield or whatever it is. I would rather that combination than get three weeks down the track, knowing that, as you've said a few times, Jordan, injuries can come, trade plants, and all of a sudden, Tex, who's at prime trade value now, in three weeks, you get another Ridley, Daniel, mm. Dangerfield, Dilemma, week after and week you lose after all week. That, lose all that beautiful cash you made. You <laughs> lose the cash you made. And, and so if now you've got the opportunity to do it, again, people have a Dangerfield Dilemma. Cool. You've got to deal with that one. And maybe that means you have to wait on Tex another week. That's cool. Prioritize the unique variables of your team. But if you don't, I'm telling you, this is the week to do it. Hawthorne really well structured defensively Adelaide's inside forward 50 connection with that midfield has been deplorable for the past five to six quarters. It's been really poor. Mm. Um, yes. They'll train it. And yes. They'll work on it, but I, I'm banking. If I can get a titch or a kneel in super coach, if I can go and get a Dunkley who, if you don't have him and you've hated missing him, if you can go and get a mid a premium in another line every day of the week, I'm doing that. And if I miss a couple of big weeks of techs and I miss another 80K, I can deal with that. What I can't deal with is missing 100K and copping a 40 and a 50 or a laid out and stuff. I can't. I (laughs) won't deal with that. It's coming. coming. It'll come. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. All right. Um, Is there anything we need to really talk about, Rids, from your perspective? We talked about that aggressive trading mindset and forcing a trade and, and some buy low options. Before we hit some Patreon questions, is there anything you're desperate to make sure we cover off for our podcast listeners? The other thing I just want to highlight here as well with value, okay, in the midfield, mm. with the premiums that do drop off, this is going to become a week-to-week name that comes into that part, but it's yeah, only it comes as a value option. Now, at some point in time, most of these mids will have a poor run and they'll become a value option okay. for a premium mid. This is across the lines, but I just want to highlight the midfield. So if you think to yourself, hey, I love Tom Mitchell at that price tag today. I want to jump on. Mm. But guess what? There is another four or five options there. You might have a gaff. You might have um, Neil. You might have whoever it is. It doesn't matter who the name is. Kelly at one stage even. You, You just need to understand the timing of it and working and again, it doesn't always work out like this, sure. but you might be able to time that trade to get them at the right draw moment. Yeah. Because and we talked about that with Sidey, just you know, that two weeks after this week, he's got a nice fixture, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, you get them from now to the end of the year or whenever you trade them into the end of the year. It's not all that poor, all those scores beforehand and everything else, you just got to be careful with that. It's irrelevant to you. Guess what, though, is relevant is that price tag that he dropped to. Correct. Yeah, it's all about that timing, isn't it? And we talked about it last week, MJ. We We actually highlighted it. You don't want to buy when they're at the highest prices with a rich vein of form. No, you do not. And now we're a week later and we're talking about it and we look back and we go, Wow, Jordan Wrigley, mm. was he the correct moment of time or not? Is questionable. And sure. I know some people do love that's not a drama. But the thing is, I don't know how many times I've seen it over the last 25 years of playing this game. Yeah. When you buy someone at such an elevated price at their peak form at such a high average, he's going to have to drop at some point in time. Is it's Dunkley just- like that? Because he's dominating. Um, Is Dunkley that guy now? Is he the next Jordan Ridley? Again, I think last week was really, he just had an outstanding game of football Mm. last week. But the previous weeks before that, we we did see he said about attendances drop. We saw impact with Trelaw scoring and sent about attendances up. I don't know, MJ. I I think it's just one of those things with Dunkley where you go, okay, He's had history of 100 
Ed 10 plus. You time. just got a back that is just going to con- continue that vein. Yeah. Really, you just got to have to back it. Same with McRae. McRae is very yeah. similar with that. Yeah. You just have to I back it. I think a good, good example. Spots. Reds, a good example of what you're saying is, is a guy I've looked at across formats the last few weeks um, is Tim Taranto, right? So he was one a lot sort of um, builders, you know, being going that next step. He had a he had a ripping year a couple of years ago. Um, and his first couple of rounds wasn't great. And then Cogs went down. So Cornelio got injured and he had a couple of massive weeks, uh, a couple of 120s in, in Dream Team AF and, as a non-owner, I was thinking, I've got to get him in. He, he's going beast mode this year. And then on the weekend in Dream Team he, in Fancy, he picks up a, a 91 um, in a game where I don't think any Giants tonned. So no. he was still their top scorer, I think, just about. In so DTNF, yeah. This kind of, this rolls into what you're saying. This would actually be a great week to get him because that 91 would get, not scare, but might put a few off. Um, so if you're someone like me who liked him um, and wanted to get him, don't be put off by the 91. Look at that as a, as a great time to get him. If mm. you believe that role, it's going to seem, um, you know, based on during the year. And I do. And, you know, he, he's someone I'm going to consider this week. Nice. There you go. All right, there you go. And if Taranto has a bad week this week, we know exactly who we can blame for talking him up, Jordox. So all that will be, be said. All that will be said. Andy Jordan. Brayshaw too. Watch, right. watch Brayshaw get tagged into a 50 this week. All right, there you go. <laughs> Everyone, you've been warned uh, about that uh, potential Jordox curse that does not exist just yet, but who knows? It might be a thing if things go pear-shaped. Uh, lads, let's let's hit some Patreon questions as we look to wrap up this episode. Uh, Jordox, I'll, I'll throw this AFL Fantasy question to you first. Uh, it's a question about Luke Ryan. Aiden Perlot wants to know. He said, "Look, Luke Ryan is he an option with low back? Is he free of that lockdown role?" And then this is the second part of his question: Who should he be looking to move on first? Is it Fantasia or a McAvoy? So there's kind of two questions there, but I think they're linked. First thing: Luke Ryan is he legit in AFL fantasy this year for us? I think I think Ryan is I, I kind of put him in the same basket as um, Nick Haynes, two, right. two guys who you know last couple of years have really, particularly last year um, for Haynes, just come up and, and look fantastic in that intercept role. Now Haynes has had a role change, so it's a bit different. I'm not sure why Ryan hasn't completely got going. He hasn't scored terribly. I mean he's had the one bad score, which was round four in fantasy at a 56, and then bounced back uh, big time against the Crows. I guess, I guess if you're getting him based on that score alone, I'd, I'd be saying just – I'd rather you have watched the game and, and seen the role improve and, and been happy with it in that aspect yeah. because, you know, as you mentioned earlier, MJ, the Crows inside 50 has been pretty poor the last couple of weeks, getting a bit text conscious, um, and that's Luke Ryan's bread and butter. Um, moving him on, uh, moving into him for Santasio or McAvoy, it's – you couldn't have two more opposite players, really. Um, yeah. I, I think you move Fantasia on. I agree. I've liked McAvoy. Um, so rank. You know, Segler, was, Segler was dropped and now uh, he's actually picked up an injury, poor guy. I just think if you've got that hard to headache, like we all do, McAvoy is a bit of a get-out clause. I agree. Um, I don't know if Ryan's going to go on with it. I think he, I'd want to have one more look at him because the Crows gave up too many... Easy balls. I agree. I think that's a fair shout. Look, and again, at this point in time of the year, he's priced in that format just over six hundred thousand dollars. Um, can you get a better option at six hundred eighteen k? I say yes. Yes, you're trying to strengthen that back line, but is he a guy you think's going to push that top ten territory for now and not just be a money making stepping stone kind of guy that you have for three to four weeks, make some money, bank some points? So, MJ, yeah, I'm agreeing. Yep, MJ, you're going to have to help me here. How many points is Ryan actually likely to outscore Fantasia or McAvoy by? Is it worth a trade? I, I don't think it's subs- – oh, look, maybe on a good week, 30. And that's think, a good week. Like, I, I think a good week is 30. No, I, th- I, think Fan- I think Fantasia's kind of like Tex. I think he's ticking along nicely. He's getting some scores. But I think Fantasia owners, what would they get him in for? To make money? And I think he's pretty close to, yeah, scoring a 40 anytime soon. Um, I think it's a decent option, but 
you know, having said that, yeah, maybe try and find the cash and get someone a bit more safer. So yeah. I think going down from Fantasia, bank the money and then get in a fat and rookie. Ah, I got a lucky Jones. Better way to do that. Yeah, yeah. lucky Jones or whoever it is, a Farrah. Highmore um, if he's named, five. yeah. Let's just say you got it, like in AFL Fantasy, because they've just had those DPP moves at the moment. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, Young Ridley. Guys like Fowler and stuff are an option because of Bergman or whoever, you know, to swing into the back line or Fantasia may even be in the forward line of that instance as well. So I would rather do that, maximise the dollars and then get a jump from a rookie score, like a fat rookie score who are slowing like a Campbell type and try and maximise bigger point gaps to what's actually there. Maybe get a Brayshaw from um, a Campbell or a Jordan yeah. rather than going a uh, Luke Ryan who's not really here or there as an absolute option across the format. The, the other th- the other thing to flag with Ryan is, uh, what well, was he around six hundred odd? Geez, if you, if you can just hold on, hold out a little longer, geez, Ridley will be Ridley. Got will Ridley be and Daniel like, in two to three weeks. Well, well that's the Daniel other thing. as well. Yeah, mm. that's the other thing. You're going to have these premiums dropping in value to that price tag. I I just see massive upside with a Ridley or a Daniel, but I don't know if but, I see but look, much upside in Ryan. It, yeah. But if but if you like him, if you like Ryan, you go for it. I just if he's think your boy, keep big boy McAvoy. Yeah, keep fair the, enough. Keep the ruck option. Uh, yep, yeah, fair enough. Uh, two uh, next question, Rins. I'll I'll throw it over to you. Jared wants to know how closely do you monitor ownership as a tiebreaker? So, for example, he's talking about in AFL fantasy, but I think more broadly, it's a good answer, question to get, get your perspective on in AFL fantasy. He's looking at Dunkley, who's obviously dominating, but he's also got options like Steele um, over, say, a McRae or even a Neal as that low ownership. When does ownership become the deciding factor and not the governing factor in, in a one-for-two trade there? Yep. Okay. So it's all about how confident you are. So if it's over 50% and you're absolutely confident, you have to take them because it hurts too much not owning them. Yeah. But there's some occasions, and you know I often say this, MJ, when it gets over 50% or 35% or whatever else, and you're not 100% sold on yeah. them, they're the guys I like to take on. Mm. I agree. I like it. I like and that. I think a Jack Steele is 100% the right person to take a Dunkley on, but it's not just a simple comparison of player to player. Yeah. It's got to be that combination of who fills Correct. in the forward spot Yep. compared to who fields in the midfield spot for the corresponding. So if it's a rookie, yeah, albeit you might be a row versus a, you know, whoever, Jordan. Yeah. And then you can do an analysis across both of those guys rather than doing it as a match for like for like. I like that. It's good. The other thing the other thing too, um, just to expand on that, I mean it, it, it's a great question. Um how how much do you put into you know ownership and I think it depends on a couple of things you know where are you sitting overall you know how how far off how bad has your start been how many points do you need to make up but the way I look at it when I try and be unique sometimes for the sake of being unique and that's a great example steel versus McRae let's just say um I, like I love steel and you know that'd be a great option but i just think of it this way every single person i'm in competition with that i'm trying to gain points on i'm handing them jack mccray every week so that's the way i think of it not to be conservative but i think there's some you got to be careful around and, and i think mccray is one of them same as like a gone you know just a guy that, that just can punish you every week yep, yep. Fair enough perspective too. While I got you there, Jordox, uh, question across the formats from Jacob. He wants to know. I think this will be a pretty easy answer for you, but you know, we'll give you we'll give you a low easy hanging fruit in your first episode, mate. He, he asked this question. Yeah. Will Riley O'Brien be a top three ruck? Uh, I would say yes. Yeah. The, I actually saw this one. I was having to think about it before. Um, like dream team and fantasy, hundred percent. Um. But maybe Super Coach Nick Nat could give him a nudge. Yeah. Maybe you guys could tell me. Yeah. Um, I know sure. Nick Nat can really do well in that format. Um, 
I think the only thing is you got to look at with O'Brien is those first two rounds, they're in his average. He, he can't erase them. If the question is from this point oh, forward, um, 100%, but, geez, those first two were absolute stinkers. But I think, I think you know, the general consensus would be absolutely. I'd actually tip Rob uh, O'Brien to um, give Grundy a nudge as okay. R2. Um, five weeks in, um, I'm probably retracting that. Yeah, fair enough too. All sure. right. <laughs> Sean has a question for you, Rids. It's, it's a very specific one for AFL fantasy surrounding Jordan Degoe. Uh, he says uh, this question, it's a ripping question uh, from Sean. He said, look, I've got Degoe and I've also copped the Dan Houston injury, who again, not certain to be ruled out, but is on the more likely side at time of recording that it's to be there. So he, he thinks he's got two forced trades and both have lost a fair bit of cash for him. The only way to get a primo in is to take one of them down and one up a very old school style trade through there. Um, I don't like to do that as it can put me behind my upgrade schedule by a week. How risky is it knowing that he won't play this week, Jordan Degoe, because of the concussion rule, how risky is it to ride Degoe out knowing that he's dropped his value down to 470K? I don't think it's risky because you're going to have an option to see what the rookie on the bench scores anyway. This way, And then you can make a decision after. So Degoe is actually playing one of the last games of the round. So Friday afternoon. Degoe? Yeah, yeah, Friday afternoon, yeah. The no, Sunday thing. afternoon. Yeah, the same thing. Same thing Friday, Sunday. That's it. Considering the first day. Only two on days different. <laughs> Jog on, mate. Jog on. Yeah, so <laughs> I actually think the goey can also be a captaincy loophole. loophole option. Yeah, nice. Depending on your VC. So if you get a decent score as your VC, it's all uh, you can just use the goey as he's not really much value. Like, I mean, to trade out. Like, I just don't think you're actually. You cop your bad luck already. I think You've so. You've cop your three, trading him at his lowest point. This is the same argument we had last week with Caleb Daniel. Yeah. I just don't like. I mean, I know the goal is not going to be a top six mid um, forward. Sure. But the the thing is, though, you don't want to sit there with his current average and the trading <laughs> out. And, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's bad luck. You just yeah. suck it up. Just hold him for the week. Use a rookie option from the bench. Have another free shot at the rookie on the field if your yeah. VC's no good. And just try and just, you know, go with the, just go with it. Like, I think so. He, I think he sort of answered his own question in a way because he sort of gave you enough reasoning to go stick with yeah him, he's you know? got a schedule and, and look sean i think he came second in afl fantasy last year so he, he knows how to play the game um no no mm. doubts about that I, I think the only reason i would ever advocate for moving to going on at this point is, is not a um logical reason at all it's purely a it's killing your enjoyment of the game that, that would be the only factor i'd say yep because he's he's yeah. dropping cash he's dropping value he's not playing it you've just hated the pick and it's now an emotionally driven decision not a structured, logical, factored in decision. If that's the reason, you know, that's fine. But that no, that's as your reason for why you're making the trade. Yeah. And the thing is as well, I mean, if you free up enough money, it's only going to be pretty much the same money you free up from fat and cow. Yeah. So to move uh Houston uh <laughs> Houston to uh Jack Lloyd, yeah. You might as well cash in the cow and get that anyway. So get rid of Campbell or Barry or whatever. You're not selling yeah. someone that you've invested a lot of money in in the first instance to now sell at his lowest end. Yeah. So I just, yeah, I just don't know. Maybe it's a case where you build around the bad luck. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Um, he owes. He owes. He owes owners to going. <laughs> I, I reckon he comes back and everyone get rid of him and watch he'll go bang. Play midfield, score a ton. Oh, that would be that would be sweet, sweet justice for those that held him. And, and nice. And the other thing, exactly. Andrew, he's got yes. Gold Coast next week and the North following. Yes, he's exactly. actually so, not a guy oh. bad draw. It's a very but, and even if he just plays forward, remember, both of those teams have been leaking goals um and, and inside 50 looks. So it, it might not be again. You might vice captain Dunkley or McRae, they pop a nice 140, 150 early in the round. 
you get stuck with, oh, there you go, Dugowie. There you go, Jordan. Captain. Carry the captaincy <laughs> armband for me, and all of a sudden, badung. That'll inspire him to greater things. There you the go. Well, week. he needs something to inspire him. Uh, Craig, <laughs> I think your super coach question, we've kind of already answered it for you about is it too early to jump on side? You know, it's not too early. Next week's probably ideal timing but certainly not too early. It's getting to the point where if you can see some signs or think that that signs are turning, then Craig, I don't think that's a horrible move for you at all. Chris wants to know an AFL fantasy question. He's currently ranked 157 Jordox. So no pressure on you with this one. He's giving you a 50, 50 pick. Um, there is around about a $70,000 difference between the two players. He's looking for a midfield premium target. Tom Mitchell at 773,000 in AFL fantasy. Well, Clayton Oliver at 824,000. Who would you suggest he goes and picks? Um, remind me of the prices again. Sorry. Uh, 773 for Mitchell, 824 for yep. Clary. Yeah, Clary's 842. 842. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hit that point in the podcast where I'm struggling now. Look yeah, no, no, sorry. sorry. Uh, uh, look, I think look, my instinct is Titch because yeah, he, agreed. you know, like I said, he'll have a good one this week against Crows. Dan Tavi loves it down there, and um, he's underpriced. And and I think with these 50-50 calls, you do sometimes have to go with the the cheaper Gee. one. If you can't split them, sometimes it's priced. I think Oliver will he'll have his work cut out for him against the Tigers. It's going to be a cracking game. Um, but long term, I'm I'm not sure I've loved what I've seen from Tom Mitchell. I think he's underpriced for a reason. I think. Um, I had real high hopes for him. And obviously the guy has um, some incredible standards from before the the injury that he had that saw him miss uh, 2019. Um, I think Oliver is probably the pick there long-term. I know this week it won't look good and the price means Titch is the bargain, but I think Oliver's underrated still. I think he just, he just gets it done every week. He's got the ceiling. Titch, I don't know. I'm not seeing him lay the tackles. I'm not seeing him get the kicks, he's handball happy. Look, I would never say don't get Titch, but flipping a coin and ignoring price there, I would say, I think Oliver long term. Right. He's a hard man, then, Joe. He's a hard man. I'm like, going, he's gone 106, 111, 71 in a hard time. He's tag, gone 120. Oh, and he's actually oh, not playing well. <laughs> no, I don't think you can I go know wrong. he's got the upside. You can't go wrong. No, and, I, and I think, look, Look, maybe, maybe let me let me say for where he's um, the the person who put the question in is placed a bit precariously. Maybe it's not necessarily to take that risk, and maybe Titch is a bit safer. But no, yep. I, I don't think you go wrong. And if that 50, 60, 70 k yeah. going to make a difference for you, like you said, I, I think that's a fair call. Nicholas has an ultimate footy keeper league question for us. Uh, I'll smash this one for us. He's got three options. Uh, he's keeping the future in mind for the Swans boys. Uh, he's talking Sam Draper uh, as a, a ruck. He's going to be your third option, mate, of the other th two names you're about to drop. There, it's a little bit closer than the other two. Campbell from the Swans, Braden Campbell or Goulden. Who who would you rather? Because I don't think Draper's even in the conversation of those other two boys. Um, I think Campbell long-term is going to be the guy. But right now, Goulden's stocks are probably higher um, based on what he's delivering as a, as a mid forward. I think Campbell's going to be the better long-term player. But I think Gordon's going to be fine too. Um, this so, yeah. this is a great this is a great question because I, I saw this one earlier as well, and this is my first year playing in a keeper league. So mm. interested in your thoughts, MJ. How you quite quickly said no to Draper because I would have thought um, the ruck position. If you can get you know a player that could be the best ruck in the game, you know down the track yep. versus midfielders where you know dime a dozen you could pick them yeah, anywhere, elsewhere. And then you get a guy like Draper who looks brilliant. When's he going to peak? Maybe four or five years when Gorn and Grundy are gone and you've got Draper. I would have gone Draper myself. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so generally the variable that always has to factor with the keeper league, which we didn't, I didn't automatically talk about here, but this is the mindset. How many do you keep? Because if you're keeping 5, 10, 15, 25, 30, that's the ultimate variable for who you should stash and why. For me, Draper... Mm -hmm. for me He's only played a handful of games that I go, I'm excited by that. And unless you've got, because it's Gorn, Grundy and O'Brien are the clear top three in a keeper league. Rucks, the guys that might push the next level, Tim English might. Mm. I think he should. 
but he might. Then it's the old blokes, Goldie, O'Brien um, is, is way past him now. Then you've got Stanley, who's going to be there. Wits is coming back off an injury. Nick Nat can't play more than 60% of game time. So for me, I just go, unless you've got – Marshall's the next big one to get. Um, he's the next big dog to, to be able to roll through there. The rest of the time, if you don't get one of those top five guys, which I don't think Draper's a top five guy for the next three to five years in the rucks, mm. you just stash a guy that can get you a 70, like a Reese Stanley or a Callum Sinclair or um, any of these guys. And in time, you'll pick one up. I think there's some options. Luke Jackson, I think is going to be just I as good. I think that's the guy and that you should be looking for. Name. He's the one you I'd go for. You can get Luke Jackson at an absolute half a bag of chips at the moment right now. if people yeah. don't know who they are. And he's going to be the best ruck in the game in three years. Yeah, I think he's the one to go get. And then the reason I like Campbell's marginally ahead of Goulden is just this guy's an elite football in terms of foot skills and player. And they're going to move Lloyd in time. He's going to drift out of that side. Mm. Um, and he's going and to he might be the only one... To hold a defensive spot as yeah, well. Yeah, correct. And Is and it? Golden's going to be a good forward. He, he'll stay in that forward line for a long enough period of time. They like that pressure forward. Okay. Um, but for yeah. me, um, I can always find it, it – finding a defensive premium that's going to hold defensive status is harder than a forward premium because that you're going to get mid-forwards every year. You're going to get 70s and 80s guys off the waiver wire yeah. every single week for me yeah. In, yeah. in a normal forward line. Most years, this year's a bit of an exception. Um, in keeper league, so for me, uh, that's why I went. Look, it'll be close, but Campbell marginally ahead. Draper, no, go and get Jackson. Gosh, even a Riley Philthorpe, um, it, it is probably going to be all right too in a handful of years' time. So, yeah, that's for me why. So, but, the other thing I just want yep. to say there as well yep. with Luke Jackson is you got Max Gorn at th- 29 turning 30 at some stage this year, I think. Yep, and Luke Jackson's 19. So Luke Jackson's 19, Scott Draper's 22. Yeah. I actually think they're almost comparable right now. Yeah. And there's Fair three sure. years when Gorn's get into the stage of 32, 33, which may or may not be he's slowing down and getting passed by Luke Jackson. Yeah. Geez, that's a good time to get him. Like, you get him now at absolute nothing. In three years' time, you're not getting him at that price. Yeah. And look, like Jack, I said, Jack, Jackson's gone past. He's gone past Draper for sure. He is. Just, it's a shame Draper got injured because I, I like totally. what I saw and, he, and he's shown some good mm. signs, but the variable with all keeper league strategy is how many do you keep? Mm. And that determines who you should keep each year and why. Because what I do see keeper league coaches, mistakes they make, is they want the next young gun. They want the next young gun. And they let the guns that are going fine now, they drift them out of their side and they can find themselves like Carlton are for many years in actual football, which is they put all their hope and trust in kids developing, kids developing, kids developing, and they don't. And then you'll get guys later on that'll just pop and fly and take them and flip them later. There was a late last year, you could have flipped um, someone into a Will Day and Will Day was a late pick in a lot of keeper leagues last year. A lot of people didn't rate him that highly. Now I think he's one of the best long-term backs going around because he's shown how good he's going to be. You could have flipped a, a Travis Boak type to a premium contender that was going for a premiership and you flip these like rookies that fly. So just because you get a young gun, highly drafted kid, there's no guarantee that they're going to pop and fly. So that that's a little bit of the mindset um, behind it for me. About yeah, no, I like that. that. Makes sense. Um, Last question, Rids, I'll throw it to you. We've got about six or seven questions that, that involve this guy's name. And so rather than give specific scenarios about him, it, it's about Tom Phillips and coaches' frustrations about him across the formats. That He's definitely been unders. No one's going to disagree that he's been unders what people had hoped he would be. Whether they'd hoped 90, 95, it really doesn't matter. Certainly not delivered to that level. So a lot of people are thinking, well, now's my chance to go and get the Neals, the McRae's, the Steels, the Mitchells, go to the back line and go and get myself, the Lloyds, the Lairds, go to the forward line. Or lines, a Grundy. Or a Grundy and get a Dunkley. If you're a Tom Phillips owner, should we be looking to trade him this week or just not at all? What should we do about Tom Phillips? We spoke about this last week. We did, MJ. And I think my advice last week was he should be an option to trade to remedy your R2 spot last week. 
Yeah, last week. So this week, though, has it changed? This week, though, I'm actually saying is not the right time to do that um, due to the fact that you've copped your 50 score last game. He's got actually got a very, very friendly matchup against Adelaide this week, and then he's got a reasonably decent run through to the end of the year. So what you can do, okay, is if you own him already, I always say to people, okay, you you get the average that he gets whilst he's in your team. Park it, okay? Yeah. You get what he's averaged between now. With that draw and with what you've seen, is he capable of averaging an 85, 90 or whatever it is across the Dream Team or AFL Fantasy? Of course he is. He's averaging 77 right now. Yeah. And he's not even been good. So there is nope. fluctuations through the year, okay? So I don't think he's the right option this week. The draws got Adelaide, St Kilda, West Coast, North yeah. Melbourne, Carlton, Gold Coast, Sydney. There's some really good matchup. He plays Adelaide twice throughout the year. He ends with a Richmond, and we know Richmond are prone to giving up points at times. Yep. I just don't think. I think he's one of those ones where it's like we saw enough in the preseason where he had an in, more inside role than outside role. He did attend quite a few set of bounces too. He's he just not in form. I no. just don't think the guy's going as well as what we thought he would. And it might be just a case of settling into a new team and a new team structure than anything else. Because a lot of people have forgotten he was actually traded to Hawthorne. So <laughs> it, does, it may take four or five weeks to actually find your feet into a new team. So I just don't think... Right now is the idea to trade him. Um, I think he's lost a little bit more value. I don't absolutely 100% think he's going to be a guaranteed six forward. But from now to the end of the year, he's got the capability of being a top 10 forward between now. So even if you're trading out now, you still got to cop the average you've had for the last couple of scores. So... It's yeah. the other it's thing too, Red. Who you think is going to average from now to the end of the year? And right. who's his alternative that you're going to? And what are they going to have of an average between now and the end of the year? Yeah. Sorry. Just, yeah, my thoughts on No, no, you're right, mate. Um, the thing with Phillips too is he, he's such a... I don't, I don't know if his ownership number's in front of me, but um, is he really hurting you? Like... Obviously, the weekend exactly. was disappointing, but it, is he hurting you? Like we've all kind of got him. Um, and geez, the second you get rid of him, you're right. He hits his straps. So the point you made, Ritz, was spot on. He, he's had a new club. Don't forget, he's he's finding his way. He's had one bad score, you know, um, which can happen from time to time. And and he's probably gonna. I think the ceiling he showed. I know it was a preseason game, but even his years at Collingwood, he showed he can. He can score some big ones. He will hurt you if you get rid of him at some point. So just be prepared for one of those big scores um, if you do get rid of him. But if everything's looking, you know, pretty swish across your field and he's the only problem you got, first of all, you know, well done. When he does, big. Will be very commonly yeah, no, I, I think that's a fair advice. If if Phillips is the worst thing in your team right now, you're doing just fine. Go and fix those fattened cows that you need to go and get. You've got a cash cow on the bubble like a Lockie Jones. You've got a Finlay McRae coming soon. You've got Farrah in AFL Fantasy. Um, you've got McCree uh, available across the finance too. So you, you've got some cows there across all lines. Now to be able to look at, Phillips shouldn't be the priority to move on. It's these other guys that you should be looking to make those moves. I, I think. And I'll fair. just, I'll make this a DT thing as well. Okay, yes. now, um, Tom Phillips is owned by fifty-two percent of teams a, across the format. Okay, he's averaging seventy-seven, and I just want to read out what he scored. Now, I know it's slightly underwhelming, but it's not a massive stretch. Besides last week. 87, 84, 81, 77, and then last week of 56. I 
I actually think there's enough upside in this guy. And he's averaging 77 where, and he's owned by 52% of teams. And I can tell you right now that I do own him in Dream Team. So at the moment, I'm currently the, one of the high ranked teams that does own him. So number one, mate, come on. One, one of the high ranked. Number one, right? So, yeah, I just think you, <laughs> sometimes you've got to manage your expectations a little bit and then just and, go and the right forward line, the, the forward road. line too. Who else is there? I mean, geez, 77 average no, in the forward line this year in Dream Team. We don't have the luxury of the DPPs flying in. Uh, yeah, so you yeah. just got to manage it, you know. you just got to go, righty he's been slightly underwhelming, but did what did you expect him to average? Was it 85? Was it 90? Was it 95? If you're thinking more than 95, you probably, you probably need to really think again. Um, I think he, if he, you know, in the absolute best circumstance ever, he might be low hundreds. Sure. I mean, he gets his first time this week. Oh, I think so too. Um, look, he's ranked to wrap it up. He's ranked 24th overall for total points in the forward lines, and he's been stinky. 24. Yeah. <laughs> and he's only going to improve, MJ. I agree. You look at averages right now for the top 10 forwards. It's ranging from 89th at 89 at 10th. He's only 12 points per game on average off the guy that's currently ranked 10th for averages. He was at low 80s prior to last week. And again, I think he's about 40-odd at half time, So he just had a stinky second half because Melbourne just ran over the top. Watch the game. That's mm. the point. Watch the game. Melbourne just owned possession. They owned the game from half time onwards. Gorn just dominated, as did the rest of his teammates. 89 right now is what a number ranked 10 forward is. He'll, if he'll have a couple up, of decent scores. Yep. People will be picking him up in a few weeks. He's fine. Uh, Toby Gr- Toby Green, who, again, if he kicks straight, would be high 90s. He's averaging 88, and people are going, he's a top He's a top tenner. Steel Sidebottom, who was the most expensive forward to start the year, he's ranked 85 in terms of an average, and he's only eight points per game less than or more than Tom Phillips. So for me, I, I just think if he's your biggest problem, you need to go find another problem um, as far as I'm concerned because he is not your problem. All right, lads, we are going to wrap up this episode. So MJ, yes. if he's your biggest problem, you hold. Yeah. You trade and dream too. You, oh, you just hold the sucker and go and trade a cow out. Go and get yourself a Lockie Jones to fix up that back line. If he's named and fully fit, go and fix up that line where we've got barely any cash cows playing. Hope Highmore plays. They need him. But go and fix that up. Know that next week you're getting a Finlay McRae. And have you got that R2 issue that we spent some time talking about? Not this week, but maybe in a week or two you do. Don't burn that trade on Phillips. Get yourself sorted. Think about what your team looks like in a month. Because Phillips, I think outside of Dunkley and Zeeble in AFL Fantasy and Dream Team scoring formats, Phillips has the potential to match everybody else that's playing. So why would you? Um, Based on that format. All right. We are pulling the plug on this bad boy. Uh, Jordox, nice work on debut from you, mate. Uh, you might get yourself a rising star nomination or you might go full <laughs> Lockie Shoal and someone steal it from you. Who knows? Well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, Rids, as always, mate, a, a pleasure. It's nice to get some of your thoughts about some of these big fantasy moves that coaches have to make this week. Well done, mate. No worries, mate. Have a good one. I will. Of course, if you want to go and read any of the articles that have been dropping right throughout the week, whether it be the break-evens, the trading priorities, your ultimate footy uh, pick-up options, or the weekly wrap-up from Johnny Coombs, you can go and check out all those things at coachespanel.tv. The links are also there to join our Patreon supporter group. You get inside access to some of the inner workings of the Coaches Panel, access to the panel, and a bunch of other exclusive content. And of course, uh, you can make sure if you're loving these podcasts, uh, you can go back and listen to others if you want, I suppose. Uh, but leave a five-star rating and review. We appreciate you. We appreciate you listening to this episode. Good luck this week. Hope everything goes your way. But from all of us here at the Coaches Panel, well, we'll chat to you soon. Oh, now she's